we collected seed from each population of Alocasiorina emuina to store in a seed bank to enable future recovery of existing populations and reintroduction and creation of new populations. Greening Australia undertook the seed collection. This is one of them. And, and this uh, curioso piece has actually got a bit of mistletoe on it too. And this is now forevermore known as 233. We've got maps of um, where other people have uh, seen them before and we tromp around uh, looking for more of them. Um, and we've been pretty successful actually. These are the fruit, the seeds are inside these pots. They're kind of warty, uh, pretty typical characteristic of the, the fruit of these things that, that they have a kind of a hit and miss pollination thing so uh, they're often uh, really irregularly knobby um, although some of them can be pretty regular like these ones over here but um, it's quite common that, that uh, you get some of these are fertilized and some of them some of these bracts aren't fertilized this can map accuracy up to you know plus or minus a metre so you get a bit more accuracy out of them. You can see the base of the GPS there and it's uh, all the black satellites. There's this, <laughs> this, and there's this, and they're all different. Similar mm. basic form, so they've got these cylindrical leaves, but that's just part of the habitat here, part of adapting to this type of habitat. Convergent evolution, yes. you know, sort of use the same strategy if uh, surviving in a tough scene. Yeah. It doesn't always look like this where the allocation occurs. Well, this one's dominated by Hakia, but we've been in others where there's a different plant association. This is the, the, the scratchiest, most tight uh, vegetation that you'll find it in, but it does occur, oh, in one other location, uh, as a, uh, um, under a Melaleuca understory. I mean, there's a few Melaleucas around here, but it's certainly not what you'd call a Melaleuca forest. Um, and often you find it right on, right on the edge, I suppose you call it an ecotone of uh, open treeless swampy heath and on a rise up to probably less waterlogged country where, where there's a few more woody shrubs and you find it right on the edge of, of the, the zone between the different vegetation types in this, in this Wallam country. Yeah, it's, it's pretty restricted. Uh, where it hangs out, I suppose, you know, that's why it's endangered. It's only got a, a geographical spread of somewhere like 35, 40 k's, you know, north to south. Um, 11 known populations, so it's, uh, you know, it may well be uh, on the, on the uh, evolutionary uh, path to doom. We're trying to get a minimum of, of about 40, uh, 40 individuals in the uh, seed collection to sort of represent the genes in this population. We're trying to sort of maxi maximise our grab of the, of the genetic diversity in the population. We keep the, the collections from each parent separate, what we don't sort of dump all the, uh, all the seeds from 40 plants into the one bag. Putting tags on so um, other people can locate these sometime in the future using our GPS uh, information and uh, sort of romp around getting close to where the GPS points are. We collected seed from about 40 plants across each site, from the 11 known populations, to get the full genetic mix. So number 334? 234. 234. Yeah. <laughs> each plant was tagged and given a unique code, and its location recorded with a GPS. The seed from each plant is put in individual paper bags. The seed is stored in the seed bank facilities at the Department of Primary Industries in Brisbane.